So here you are working on your own game using your favorite game engine and everything is going super smooth. You bound your inputs, you can look and move your character around as well as jump and you even showed your game to your friends, great. But you're just not quite satisfied with the results. So you start working on being able to slide on the ground as well, just like in your favorite games. You start fiddling with your variables, making that slide really neat and you inevitably discover enumerations and how to use them. Let's be honest, you weren't going to be satisfied with just that slide ability, so you started adding a lot more. Crouching, wall riding, even dying, you know, all the good stuff. Fast forward for a bit and your code right now is sitting at around a thousand lines just in your character file. And whenever your friends tell you, hey, you should definitely let the player attack too, you start having PTSD just from the thought of having to go back inside the character file and sit through all of those... Oh. Um, never mind, it seems you just forgot to add an if statement and now everything stopped working. Uh, actually, it wasn't the if statement, you just didn't remember to reset a variable once the player hit the ground. Weird. You can see how quickly things can get messy if we keep everything in one file, and we keep checking what our character can and can do with if statements and switches, with booleans and enumerations. Either way, we can't keep doing what we were doing, checking enumerations, checking booleans to see if the player pressed crouch or not, checking what he is doing right now to see if we can make him jump, etc. Don't get me wrong, for simple functionality this is still perfectly fine and fast, but having complex states like in Call of Duty for example will require some preparation. Working on Heavy Beat, I ran into this very issue from the start, and the solution that worked best for me, mind you, there are quite a lot of approaches to this, so feel free to do your own research and choose what best suits your game, but my solution was to design a finite state machine for my player. So what is a finite state machine? Well, it's some bit of code that allows an object to behave in a certain way depending on what state it is in. For example, a light bulb can either be on or off, and a button can switch the light bulb state from on to off, or vice versa. This allows you to define behavior in code that will only execute when an object is in a certain state, as well as when the object is leaving or entering that certain state. This means we can make the light bulb blue when it's on, and we can make it honk like a duck when it's off. So essentially, you still have the same kind of gameplay logic in your code as before, but this time it is split into many states, so instead of sifting through thousands of lines of code and remembering where in the code you check for this and where in your code you check for that, you can just simply create a new state for your object, define the behavior, which means telling it what it can and can't do, and then switch to it whenever you need that behavior present in the actor. But enough theory, let me show you how I accomplished this in Unreal Engine for Heavy Beat. Please keep in mind that this is not supposed to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but merely explaining the logic behind the system so that you can learn by trying to implement something similar for your game as well. So I have two main objects in Heavy Beat that together form a finite state machine. I have a state and a state manager that gets attached to the desired actor. The state inherits from you object and the state manager from you actor component. The attached state manager holds a list of available states that the player can be in, as well as a tag for each of them so that I may refer to them more easily. I can also modify the tags and states from blueprints. The manager then creates all the states found in this list at the start of the game and holds a reference to the instances for the rest of the game. Each state has three main functions, one for entering the state, one for exiting the state and one that gets called every frame, kinda like an actor's begin play on destroyed and tick events. These functions get constantly called on by the manager that has a reference to the current state object. For example, whenever I need a player to go from idle to the run state, I have a bit of code in the idle state object that keeps checking if the player's horizontal velocity is above zero. If it is, then it will call a state switch on the manager. The manager then proceeds to stop the ticking of the current state, executes the onStateExit function on the current state, then it overwrites the current state's reference with the desired new state reference and calls onStateEnter on it. Essentially, this system ensures that each bit of functionality found in these separate states gets executed properly. For example, the slide state has to configure quite a lot of attributes for the player. These are all done in the onStateEnter function, and then later reverted back to their original values in the onStateExit function in order to ensure that any modifications done to the player by these state objects is encapsulated and isolated, so that it may not interfere with other bits of functionality found in other states or even in the player code itself. This covers the basics of the system and hopefully I've explained it well enough for you to try out implementing something similar in your games as well. 
Heavy B will be entering a public alpha in about three weeks, so if you would like to be notified when that happens, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching.